Good day. We thank God for another privilege and the grace to be amongst the living. It's Palm Sunday, a very historic day in the life of the church. We trust that Jesus indeed will enter our lives like a royalty in this season in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that his word will bless our lives this day also in the name of Jesus. Mm. We are still continuing on our sub team, how to live a God-pleasing life. And then our topic for today specifically says, loving your enemies. With me in the studio today to discuss our fathers and the Lord, by my right, Venerable Cyrenus Dangana Okoriko, the vicar of the church in Durumi. Yeah. Our Savior's Anglican Church, Durumi. Sir, so you're welcome to the program. God bless you. And then I also have Reverend Canon Benson Eyinayo, the vicar, St. Barnabas Anglican Church, Katampewan. So you're welcome. Thank you very much. Okay. Our aims, let's look at our aims briefly, and then we get back to reading the background text. One is to understand the stipulated biblical attitude towards an enemy. Two, to learn from the fact that we too were once enemies of God. And then three, to appreciate why we should love our enemies. Quickly, let's look at our background scriptures, three of them. Reverend Canon, sir, Matthew chapter 5, 43 to 48. Venerable, you help us with Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Matthew chapter 5, we read from verse 43. Yes, sir. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to, be to God. Luke chapter 23 and verse 34 says, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be to God. God. And let me take Acts chapter 7, verse 57 to 60. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our introduction from the outline says, An enemy is one who deliberately opposes or mistreats another, basically out of hatred, and may go any length to harm if able or opportune. Incidentally, there is undue attention paid to enemies today, probably out of fear. The desire in many of such cases is to wish them evil or suffer not a witch to live. That we can see in Exodus 22 verse 18. Mm. The New Testament seems different from the Old on this matter, perhaps because of Jesus' declaration in Matthew 5, 43 to 44, from where we took our background text. Mm. We too were once enemies of God. Colossians 1, 21 verse 22 tells us that we were once enemies, but now in Christ we've been reconciled. Mm. How did he treat us then? The enemies to be overcome today are primarily spiritual and not physical in nature. Mm. Ephesians 6, 12 mm. tells us that the battle is not against flesh and blood and that we should put on the whole armor of God. Now let's get to the study guide. Venerable sir, yes, sir, who is an enemy? One, mm. B, who is the real enemy of any Christian? Mm. And then finally, should a Christian be in enmity with any person? Mm. Looking at all those reference scriptures mm. there. Mm. 
Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. I think uh, the introduction is very plain. It says, an enemy is one who deliberately opposes or mistreats another basically out of hatred and may go to any length to see that that individual is harmed, uh, if given that opportunity. And uh, we see an example in Exodus chapter 15, where the word of God says, and I read, Exodus 15 mm. from verse 9, he says, the enemy boasted, I will pursue, I will overtake them, I will divide his spoils, I will gorge myself on them, I will draw my sword, and my hand will destroy them. You can see? The intention of the enemy is to destroy, is to spoil, is to kill, is to make sure that you don't, everything about life in you is snuffed out. So an enemy is that person that does not wish you well. Thank and you, the, main, the main goal is to destroy. Now, looking at ourselves as Christians, mm. who are our real enemies now? The big part of that question. Well, uh, the tendency is for you to see that person who wants to harm you as the, as the real enemy. But the word of God, even as we read from the passages so given for our consideration this, uh, this day, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 26 and Ephesians 6, which is much popular, mm. uh, we says that we do not war against flesh, uh, and, blood. flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and the likes. So we say for the Christian, we know that, that 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 your neighbor who wants to harm you, that is the real enemy. But there are forces, there are powers, there are principalities that are controlling that person that want to harm you. So for us, it goes beyond that person you are seeing. Thank you, sir. Mm. So looking at, you know, I told you it's three mm. barrels. Yes. Looking at the sea part of it now, mm. and in the light of the New Testament teaching of mm. Jesus in mm. Matthew chapter 5, mm. 43 to 48, should a Christian be in enmity with any person? Well, the answer is obvious from the scriptures we have taken as a, a portion for the main readings. Matthew chapter 5, from verse uh, 43 to 48. It tells us that, well, our Heavenly Father is one that is very magnanimous. He gives rain to the good just and, the, and the, un the bad. So for us, I think what that place is telling us that we should not see anybody as an enemy. We should not see anybody created in the image of God as an enemy. There is a force behind that person, like I've said earlier. And it is that force that we should try to see as the real enemy, not that individual, not that your neighbor, not that man in the office that have refused you to be uplifted, you know, in your office, in your, in your position, but you should see the force behind him as the real enemy. Let us wonder the scripture enjoins us that if it were possible, mm. if it will be possible, be in peace with all, with all men. Mm. Reverend Colonel, sir, you want to... Yes, I want to concur with what he, uh, my brother said. Mm. I want to look at what uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 7. Mm. Who is an enemy? Mm. Say your carnal mind is enmity with God. Because it is not subject to the law of God. Even your mind when it is not subject to the law of God even your mind, hmm, that's a good when it is, it is outside the realm of the control of God, it's your enemy. Because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth, the mouth speaks. And don't forget, Jesus said, if you look at a woman lustfully with your eyes, you have committed adultery with her in your mind. So, the evil that permeates our body is generated from the, from the mind. Mm. And devil or Satan, if we give him that power to control our mind, then our mind is our own enemy. enemy. So let us look at um, 1 Peter 5, 8. He said, so we have to be alert and be of sober mind. We have to be alert and be of sober mind. 
because our enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. So if our mind, if we are not at alert, our, our mind is not sober, then we become captives to the activities, the vice of the devil. Thank you very Praise much, sir. I pray we will not give the devil a foothold in our mind because Amen. we are not ignorant of his devices. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, sir. That was a very deep dimension to this discussion. Our minds can actually indeed become our enemies. Should Christians pray for enemies to die? <laughs> I love this question. You know, we live in an age where everywhere in our churches, prayers are going on, mm -hmm. fighting sin and unseen forces. Mm -hmm. Reverend Canon, sir, should a Christian <laughs> pray for an enemy to die? Let's read First Peter three nine because we've taken Matthew five in the course of our First um, Peter three nine. Mm. It says, "Do not repay evil with evil, or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing." It is clear from what we have just read that. Uh, we are not supposed to, as Christians, pray for our enemies to die. Indira Gandhi says, it is difficult to, 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 to derive love than to destroy it. It is difficult to derive it than to destroy it. And where we read, First Peter says, we should not repay evil for evil. And don't forget what Proverbs 16, 7 says. It says, when the ways of a man pleases God, he will make even his enemies to, to be, be at peace with him. Our enemies, if we are looking at enemies of the flesh now, not uh, Satan, our enemies, might be, your enemy may even be your brother. Your enemy may even bring your wife. Mm. Your enemies may even be your child. With what is going on in Nigeria today, one cannot be sure where his enemies are coming from. Yes, sir. But Jesus has set an example. Love your neighbor as yourself. Your neighbor might be your enemy. We are, we are, we are, we are, we are asked to pray for our enemies. We are Ask to pray for them. You cannot, you cannot love somebody that you pray for. And you cannot pray for somebody that you love. Mm. What I'm trying to say is that the person you pray for must be somebody that you love. Yes, sir. And somebody that you love is the person that you pray for. So if we pray for our neighbors, that means we love our neighbors. Yes, sir. And if we love our neighbors, we must continually pray with, for them. Whether they are people that look at themselves as our enemies or not. So to summarize, I would say that we are not to pray for our enemies to, to die. die as Christians. Because Christ died for us even when we're still sinners. He came and sacrificed himself. Definitely we were enemies to God at that, that particular time. But God so loved us that he gave his son to die for us. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I mean, this is very deep. Mm. In an age where everywhere is fall and die, fall mm. and die, mm. God is bringing us to the path of mm. love. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think um, just to add a little bit, um, the portions we read uh, is telling us that we should be like our father. And God we are talking about is a God who loves. He desired not the death of anybody. In fact, even those people that are, those people who are really into this act of being your enemy, um, the, it, it is not the will of God for them to walk in that way. So it is you that have God in you that can pray for them so that God can open their eyes to see, you know, the wrong way they are following so that they can make a U-turn. And that is very important, especially in this nation, Nigeria, where every day it is killing that, killing this, uh, has men and so on. We really need to continue as a church to pray for these people so that God can open their eyes Thank and you. know the folly in which they are following. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. sir. Thank God thus far for how he is leading us in this topic, bringing us back to the pathway of love mm -hmm. and then opening our eye to understand 
wound our real enemies are. We trust that the Lord will continue as we come back after this break. Stay back. The Lord will bless you. Thank you. For me, living to please God is simply living according to the word of God. Pleasing God entails you staying with your wife in understanding according to the scripture, and exactly. not in beating her. Welcome back. Remember, we are still studying the topic, loving your enemies, as part of the sub team, how to live a God-pleasing life. I've been in the studio with our fathers in the Lord, Venerable Cyrus Okoriko, the Archdeacon and Vicar, our Saviour's Anglican Church, Duremi. Sir, thank you for honoring God today. It's a pleasure. And then our Father in the Lord, Reverend Canon Benson, Eyinago, the Vicar. St. Barnabas Anglican Church, Katampewa. Sir, thank, thank you, you for coming. Much. We want to look at question three now. Yes, sir. Why are Christians to love their enemy? And Reverend Canon, I'm directing that question to you. Okay. Why are Christians to love their enemies? Looking at all those background scriptures, I'll read Luke chapter 6, 32 to 36. And then Reverend Canon, you read Romans 2, 17 to 21 in addressing that question. Luke chapter 6, verse 32. But if you love those who love you, mm. what credit is that to you? Mm. For even sinners love those who love them. Mm. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. Mm. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? For even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much back. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Mm. Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father also mm. is merciful. Mm. Romans chapter 12, 17 to 21, sir. Romans chapter 12, verses 17 to 21. I read, Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Now, why are Christians to love their enemies? Christians, because God asks us to do so. One. Direct instruction from God. Direct instruction from God. Because say vengeance belongs to him. From what the Romans um, chapter 12 I read, mm. it said do not repay anyone evil for evil. In the Mosaic law it said an eye for an eye. That is revenge. But Christ has come to put more flesh and to explain better that our enemies are human beings like us. That we should not revenge that he is there and he is the, the God, that all-knowing God, that we should leave vengeance to him. Now, if we look at uh, that question, we see that when we love our enemies, we will be happier. Exactly. As human beings, we'll be happy. Because we will not think about uh, anybody who is our enemy. Two, our relationship, the way they see us, those people that call themselves our enemies, the way they see us, 
that we pray for them, we love them, we show love to them, we might end up changing them for the better. Yes, sir. We might end up changing them. The Bible tells us that even when a man marries somebody that is not of the faith, but the behavior of the woman might even convert the man to the faith. Mm. Yes, sir. Instances like that exist. Mm. Thirdly, we might end up making friends with that person that we call an enemy. If we show enough love and compassion towards the person. We are also setting a good example to even our children to see that enmity does not pay. If our children sees us loving people that paraventure they are uh, they, 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 they don't like us or they don't like uh, our family. Say, ah, how can daddy be be praying for such a person and uh, uh, giving the children, maybe he sees the children go to school, he, he gives them lifts. He might change the perception of these children. Mm -hmm. As they grow up, they will, they will realize that um, relationship, mm -hmm. good relationship matters more than bad relationship Thank as in uh, enmity. Mm -hmm. And it is also a test for you as a human being. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, sir. Let's quickly look at question four. In a world full of evil, oppression, hatred, and intimidation, what should be a Christian attitude to enemies and their activities? Mm -hmm. Venerable, sir. Yeah. Psalm chapter 37, 1 to 9. All right. And it reads, it says, Do not fret because of evil men. Or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Mm -hmm. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your, your righteousness shine like the dawn. The justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For evil men will be cut off. Hmm. But those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me also read Romans 8.31 right. and then you tie okay. up both scriptures together as you answer. Mm. What then shall we say to this thing? Mm. If God is for us, mm. who can be mm. against yeah. us? So in a world that is full of evil, mm. what should be our attitude as Christians towards mm. those that we supposedly call our enemies? Mm. I think uh, the problem with us, these end time Christians, is that uh, we tend to forget the God we serve. We tend to forget that He's Almighty, that He can do the impossible. Mm. Sometimes we want to believe that these people cannot be changed. You have prayed, you have been waiting for that change to come at your own time, and you know, but you see that the evil that we are talking about is like it's continuing much more than before. But God says we should not fret, He says we should wait upon Him. You know, the timing of God is different from the timing of oh, man. man. And sometimes the way you want to take revenge as human being, you may overdo it. You may throw caution <coughs> aboard. And you that, who is supposed to be the one that will be, that people should see as the victim, you may end up being the, yeah. the, the person, person that people uh, are persecuting. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are men. The way God sees is different from the way we see. Uh, sometimes we think that man is the enemy. You know, and we want to take the battle one on one and end up we being the one that becomes the one that is victimizing the other, the other person. person. Because our, we cannot see behind the face, but God sees the heart of man. So when we leave the battle for God, God will always fight the battle for us. And He will give us victory. He has promised us victory. No matter how long it takes, let us wait upon Him and there shall be victory. So we keep on loving, we keep on praying. For that enemy, at the end, the name of God will be glorified. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I thank God for St. Paul, the conviction mm -hmm. in that Romans 8.31. Mm -hmm. See, if God is, is for us, us, no 
person so can be. So if God is for us, that is all. We, we don't have any other fear. But once we don't have that God in us, we, the tendency is for us to go and fight the battle ourselves. Thank you very much, sir. I trust God that this has been quite insightful. And this study is timely. At a time that all around us, in fact, everything around a man now mm. appears to be mm. an enemy. Mm. I pray that God will open our eyes to know where we should take the battle to, mm. to fight the unseen forces mm. in high places that are battling against our spiritual mm. destiny. I want to quickly take the conclusion. Mm. A genuine relationship with Christ will be evident in our personal relationship with others, including mm. our enemies. Mm. We are to obtain grace from God to love them, mm. pray for them, bless them, mm. learn to live peaceably with all mm. and repay evil with good mm. and wait patiently on God mm. and trust him. Mm. Food for thought. By loving your enemies, God, God will put them under your feet. Amen. Let's quickly take the memory verse together. Mm. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 44. Mm. Matthew 5 44. Matthew 5. Matthew 5 44. Mm. Matthew. Okay. Mm. But I say mm. to you, love your enemies, mm. bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Mm. I think that injunction is clear. Yeah. God is telling us to pray for those who love us. May we grow in love, Amen. even in this season, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We want to trust God that we've all been blessed today again as we land at the feet of Jesus. We invite you to still continue to be part of this study, this series. We trust that at the end of it all, God would have taken us to the next level in our work with Him. We want to most especially thank our resource persons who have honored God today. We pray that the Lord will indeed bless you and enlarge you on every side in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then Reverend Siren is Sir, thank you. God bless you. And then Reverend Canon Ben Sine Yinago. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Much. Viewers, we trust that the Lord has blessed you. We invite you to also partner with God and be part of what is happening in our time. It's indeed awesome. Mm. So we trust that if God is leading in your heart to support this program, you can look at the numbers that are scrolling now on your screen. We also invite you to interact more closely with us. Give us feedbacks. Let's know how this program is reaching out to you. The numbers are social media platforms. The Facebook channels are all there for you to do that. We we'll also will want to continue to ask you to pray for us, that the Lord will increase this program and let it take the gospel to the ends of the earth. Stay glued when we see you again next week. I remain your host, Chukwe Bukejakan. God bless you. Thank you.